lesson so I can put it on CS.net. All right. Today we are talking about doing math. As a precursor, what are some basic mathematical operators that you guys can do on, let's say, just a scientific calculator? Addition. Addition. Subtraction. Subtraction. What else can we do? Multiplication. Multiplication. Division. And division. All right. Well done, everyone. Those are the four most basic mathematical operations. And Python is able to do all four of those. We can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Um, for each of these, we need two numeric values. So we need either int or float typed values in order to do these kinds of operations. And either value can either be a variable or the value stored in a variable or a specific number that we type in as the programmer. So in this example, num1 equals 8 plus 2. So I've hard coded as the programmer two numbers. 8 plus 2, that is 10. So num1 is going to equal 10. Num2 is going to equal num1 minus 6. So the value stored in num1 minus 6. So 10 minus 6, that is uh, 4. I can do math. math. Um, and then our num3 is num1 times num2. 10 is in num1, 4 is in num2. 10 times 4 is 40. So we can do math with hard-coded numbers, just the values and variables, or some combination of those two. Here is a full list of the operators we have available. Um, if you took uh, Intro to Programming last year, um, the version of Python we're using in this class is slightly different from last year. Um, and one of the biggest differences is in uh, the integer division. So we have, there's our four most basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Um, we use an asterisk for multiplication. In Python 2, which was what the class was in last year, uh, division would always result in an integer if you divided two integers. In Python 3, which is the version we're using this year, um, when you divide two integers, you will still get a float value. You will always get as accurate of an answer as you can when you do division. If you want to perform integer division, so if you wanted to not save those decimal places, you can with a double forward slash. And that will, uh, that will force the output, it will force the result to be an integer. So if I say 10 divided by 4, that'll give me 2 and a half. But if I say 10 double divide 4, that's going to equal 2. It's just going to get rid of that decimal place, completely eradicate it. Um, I can use double asterisks for an exponent. So I can say 10 to the power of 4, because the left side is the base, the right side is the power. 10 to the power of 4. Modulus. Um, if you're not familiar with programming, uh, I'll talk about what modulus is. And essentially, it's giving us the remainder when we do a division. And our last operator is the minus again. But in this case, we're using it for negation. We're uh, turning one value negative instead of doing a subtraction. A little bit more about modulus. The modulus, represented by the percent, also called mod, is used when we want to do division, and we want the uh, we want the remainder of that division instead of the quotient. We don't care what the actual division answer was. We want what was left over. So if you remember back to doing long division in elementary school, let's say I want to find the answer when I divide 17 by 5. I put it in my little division symbol, 17 divided by 5. 
five can go into one zero times. So we have to check how many times can five go into 17. That can happen three times. So five times three is 15. 17 minus 15 is two. Can five go into two any number of times? No, five does not fit into two. Therefore, our division is finished. So we have a quotient of three and a remainder of two. Harkening back to our math vocabulary. So when I mod 17 by five, I get two. Um, one of the most frequent applications of this operator, the mod operator, is determining whether a value is even or odd. Um, we can determine when a value is even by knowing that it is a multiple of two. If the value is divisible by two evenly, if there's no remainder, then it is even. A value is odd when it is not a multiple of two, when there is a remainder of one, when you divide it by two. And those are the only two possible scenarios, because if you have an even number and you add one to it, it is no longer divisible by two, so it becomes odd. And when you add one to that number, it becomes divisible by two again, because there's really only two. Each pair you go, you're going to toggle back and forth between even and odd. So let's practice doing some modulus. What is 15 mod 6? 3. 3. Why is it 3? Um, because 16, um, 6 can go into um, 15 two times, which is 12, and the 15 minus 12 is 3. Absolutely correct. So the biggest multiple of 6 that we can fit into 15 is 12, like you said. 15 minus 12 is 3. All right, and then what's 10 mod 2? Zero. Zero, correct, because those numbers divide evenly. Two goes into 10 five times with nothing left over. So our remainder is zero. All right, if we go back to our table, there are two types of operators on this table. There are binary operators, which take a value on both sides. And most of the operators in that table are binary operators. And there is just one unary operator here, which only takes a value on one side. Really, it's just the minus here. So we can add with two plus two, we can divide, two do over two. Well, most of those operations require two values, where the negation operator requires just a value on its right side. And keep in mind, the minus can be used either for subtraction or negation, depending on how you use it. Um, another possible example of a unary operator, this is not in Python, but just in math, another unary operator would be factorial. Um, you can say 5 factorial, and that means you're multiplying 5 by all of the numbers before it until you hit 1. So we don't need any other numbers in that display. We can just say 5 exclamation point, and that exclamation point is our factorial operator. So with these two types of operators in mind, just keep that tucked away in there. Let's remember PEMDAS. Who remembers what our PEMDAS stands for? What does the P mean? Parentheses. Parentheses. What is E? Exponents. Exponents. What is M? Multiplication. Multiplication. And what did we just learn today? Division. Uh, and modulus. Modulus, which also starts with an M. D, I heard, is division, correct. What is A? Addition. Addition, and finally? S is subtraction. for? Subtraction. 
Subtraction. All right, well done everyone. We all remember our order of operations. Um, we're gonna throw negation in here. It's gonna get tucked in right here. Um, and remember, if you have multiple values of the same level, because M and D are of the same level, and A and S are of the same level, you're gonna go from left to right in your operation. So let's practice. What here is going to happen first? What is the first operation gonna happen? One plus one. One plus one, because it is inside of our parentheses. So one plus one becomes two. What's next? Exponent. The exponent, so three double asterisk two, which is three to the power of two. That is nine. Then what? Division. Technically, the next thing that happens is this negation, but it doesn't really change our calculation. So yes, the next thing that happens is our division. Nine over two is four and a half. Negative six minus four and a half is negative 10 and a half. Now, um, last class, I had someone ask how I can actually tell the difference between a negation and a subtraction, uh, especially if my minus is in the middle of a calculation. Because um, if I'm saying four minus five, then my minus sign is being used for subtraction, right? How can I force a minus, right, a, that symbol to be used for negation? And the simplest way is to make sure that you have it inside of parentheses. So negative six plus three. Here, we're going to make sure that we negate this six before we do that addition. So um, ensuring that you have some separation in this in this case, it's for a parenthesis between the, the minus sign and any other value will make sure that you, uh, you do your correct, your correct order of operations. That makes sense? Sweet. All right. All right, and that is our lesson for today.